Welcome to the Apron Academy. This video is specially designed for the dietitian in training, also known as the RD to be. Today we're going to be talking about thiamine, which is also known as vitamin B1. So here's our thiamine molecule. And then we also have THDP, which is the a cofactor for thiamine. So um, many of these vitamins have two cofactors. This is the only one for thiamine. So let's talk about where we can eat this stuff. So you can get it in unrefined cereals, whole grains, meats, nuts, legumes. But I just want to point out that when you heat it, you do lose some of the thiamine activity. So this methylene bridge, which is pretty unstable, it can rupture. Um, and it can also happen with some uh, food preservations. So... Now, I also have these little fish up here. First of all, I do want to remind you to relax. There's a lot going on with vitamin B1. But relax, I got you taken care of. But eating fish, I want to point out that if you eat raw fish, then you're going to have something called thiaminases. And these thiaminases destroy thiamine in our GI tract in our gut. So if you're eating raw, um, raw fish and also um, ferns, it can uh, give you these thiaminases that breaks down the thiamine. And just like when we um, cook the uh, whole grains, meats, etc., it does lose that thiamine activity. Um, when we cook the fish, it does um, prevent us from having these thiaminases. So this is going to be important for something I'm going to talk about a little later. So we eat it, and then it's absorbed into our body. Um, it's mostly through passive diffusion, but we do have um, some active transport um, if it's t eaten in this THDP, um, and this does stand for thiamine diphosphate, but if it's eaten in this form, we have to take off these, uh, phosphates and just have this OH group, um, in order to absorb it. So... Many of the transporters, I do just want to say, are inhibited by alcohol. So if you do have, um, do drink alcohol quite a bit, then those um, transporters that help get thiamine into our body um, are, it, aren't going to do their job. So we need uh, to just be mindful of that. So how does it then get into the body? So we have our port portal circulation, which which gets then into the liver, and then general circulation, so it gets into the rest of the body. So only about 30 to 50 um, milligrams are stored in our body. And now I want to talk about what it does when it gets into our body. So there's a big old uh, mechanism here, but we're going to break it down. So I want to talk about this, thiamine diphosphate, thiamine pyrophosphokinase, and then the THDP adenyl transferase, and I probably butchered all those names. So each of these three are the primary enzymes that occur in this mechanism. So here is our um, THDP. And then our thiamine, so those two structures we looked at earlier. If we eat it in this um, thiamine diphosphate form, we do have to use the thiamine diphosphate to turn it back into a smaller um, so that it can be absorbed. 
but then we are able to remake, I guess, the thiamine into this uh, THDP. So thiamine has um, a half-life of 18 to 24 days, so that's about as long as it'll last in your body. And then it's excreted in the urine. So if our kidneys are doing a good job, there's really not going to be any um, toxicity of vitamin B1. And then also if you want to check uh, your body to see how much thiamine is in there, we can look at the urethrocyte transketolase, and I'll talk about the transketolase in just a sec, but um, we'll look at that activity and then if we add um, more thiamine and the activity levels go up, that means we didn't have enough thiamine originally in our body. So if there's anything greater than 16% uh, increase in activity, then that shows that we have had a deficiency. And something I'll talk about a little later, very, very, um, those symptoms appear when the activity level has gone up by 40%. So it means you're really deficient. This is, and before I move on, this is the primary thing we need to know is that it's almost kind of like able to be recycled. If we have the TDP, we can make it into thiamine. Thiamine can go into this TDP. No, the, uh, these three main enzymes. So how does it function? There are two uh, primary ways. It's essential for energy production. And then it's super important for DNA and RNA synthesis. Um, I want to go back before I continue, and I did mention that this is the only uh, cofactor form. So there are more isoforms, th these thiamine-derived isoforms, this one here, here, and here. These have unknown functions, so we know that they're there, but don't really know much about them. You just need to know that they are there. So now I want to talk about these four classes of proteins that require the cofactor THDP. So we need it for um, decarboxylases, transketolases, oxidoreductases, and then alpha keto acid dehydrogenases. Um, the two that I want to focus on, and I'm numbering these intentionally, is this alpha keto acid dehydrogenase and the transketolases. So I numbered it like this because they coincide with our functions, energy production and then DNA synthesis. So to picture this, this is what's going on. So again, the Energy production is right here. DNA synthesis right here. Um, so this is my beautiful rendition of the Krebs cycle. Um, just wanting to show that these multiple arrows means there's a bunch more going on than I'm showing you. But we do have um, this TD, THDP uh in different points along the Krebs cycle. So in order for this energy production for life, we need thiamine. And now I also want to point out um, that this thing going on right here is the pentose pathway uh, or pentose phosphate pathway. So here the transketolases are the main enzyme. And um, this reaction is able to um, like pass on through so that we can make these nucleotides. One thing that is very important that I want to point out with this reaction is that um, 
pancreatic cancer cells upregulate this transketolase. Um, so this enzyme requires the um, THDP for the activity. Um, so specifically for pancreatic cancer and for other cancers, they are looking into chemotherapies. And remember the fish that I talked about earlier and how those thiaminases break down the thiamine in our gut? Well, now for chemotherapy, they're trialing the um, thiaminases uh, to be used to decrease this THDP so it doesn't go down this pentose pathway and then the cancer basically feed on the nucleotides. So um, it's this is important, this whole function is important for the DNA and RNA synthesis, but it's also important to note um, how this mechanism plays a part and how thiaminases are used in this mechanism uh, to prevent cancer. So what happens if we don't have enough? I kind of um, implied this a little earlier when we were doing the tests to see how much um, thiamine we have and if the activity goes above 15 or 16 percent then that indicates deficiency for this berry berry um, if it goes above 40 percent then we are in a bad place we need some thiamine so the first signs of inadequate thiamine levels first appear in the brain that can appear within two to three weeks because the brain is dependent on glucose as an energy source. So we can see that here. We need to move this glucose along um, and we need the thiamine to do this. So um, let me see. So berry, berry is the deficiency disease and it affects our nervous system and our cardiovascular system. So in infants, this can be seen as heart failure or cyanosis. And then in adults, we can see things like mental confusion, anorexia, muscle weakness, ataxia, eye paralysis, tachycardia, enlarged heart, so many things, we need thiamine. Um, but I also want to point out that beriberi has two different um, kind of types. So I mentioned that it affects the nervous system and the cardiovascular system. It's labeled as dry when it affects the nervous system. So there is um, muscle wasting because of damaged nerves. And then it's kind of a wet beriberi um, if it's affecting the cardiovascular system, we often see edema. There's peripheral, peripheral vasodilation. So our uh, blood vessels are getting bigger. Our heart has to pump harder in order to pump the blood, um, resulting in that edema that I mentioned. So the deficiency is caused primarily by obviously not eating enough, um, alcohol, this affects all the B vitamins, um, sulfates, which were used uh, for preservation, not really used anymore. And then some drugs even can cause a deficiency in uh, thiamine. And also back to the raw fish and the ferns. So those contain the um, thiaminases which destroy the uh, thiamine in the GI tract, um, but once cooked, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So I know that does bring up the thought of, oh my goodness, can I ever eat sushi again with the raw fish? There is um, a moderation uh, in that, and also just... Um, making sure you don't eat raw fish all the time and making sure you do get other uh, sources of thiamine. And then finally, I want to talk about genetic disorders that could be associated with this. So it manifests itself as 
uh, diabetes, and anemia. So this just shows thiamine is needed for glucose homeostasis and for blood control or hematopoiesis. Also, it's important, um, we see this in pyruvate decarboxylation deficiency. So this is primarily seen as lactic acidosis in children. Um, this results from mutations in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and you're like, okay, I've lost you. But if we go back to this, basically what I'm talking about is right here. It's preventing, it. the mutations are going on right in here, and so it's preventing the Krebs cycle from moving forward, which can cause neurological dysfunction. We also um, see maple syrup urine disease, megaloblastic anemia, Wilson's disease. This can all be treated with high doses of thiamine or vitamin B1. Um, and I know you're probably freaking out of, oh no, I'm never eating sushi again. I'm never um, going to how am I going to live? I'm going to have all these deficiencies. Really, the deficiency is not common, um, except for an alcoholics, since the alcohol inhibits these transporters to absorb. So, as you can see, thiamine is so important to our body. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share this with others. Thanks.